Genetic conditions and genetic mutations may seem foreign to us as cattle producers, but they're a necessary part of life. In fact, genetic mutations are essential to create diversity within a species. However, they're often misunderstood. Every human, every animal, and every plant is a carrier of multiple genetic conditions that are caused by mutation. But most of these conditions are recessive, so they're rarely expressed. Some mutations are desirable, such as the polled trait in cattle. Other mutations are undesirable, such as the genetic condition called developmental duplication, or DD, as well as other conditions identified in all breeds of cattle. Remember, genetic mutations are significant because they create change within a species and form the basis of genetic variation. When these mutations are undesirable, it's important to understand how they're inherited so you can manage against their undesirable impacts. The first step in managing genetic conditions is knowing which cattle in your cow herd may be potential carriers. You can visit angus.org to access AAA login where you can generate a list of potential DD carriers in your inventory. You'll also see that the DD status is designated in four ways. Potential carriers are identified with a DDP. Tested DD-free cattle are identified with a DDF. Carrier cattle are identified with a DDC. And affected cattle are designated with a DDA. Cattle identified as DDP or potential carriers can be DNA tested to determine their DD status. That begins with taking a hair or blood sample and submitting it to the Association for Evaluation. If you already have samples on file with the American Angus Association, these can be used again to determine DD status as well. Once you have DNA test results in hand, it's really pretty simple to manage around the negative impacts of DD. Here's how. It really begins with an understanding of alleles. An allele is one member of a pair or series of genes that occupies a specific position on a chromosome. Each parent contributes one copy of the allele to complete the gene or gene sequence. Alleles can come in two forms, dominant or recessive. So, in the case of DD, a DDF animal, or DD-free, is designated as capital D, capital D. A DDC, or DD carrier animal, is designated as capital D and little d. And a DDA, or DD affected animal, is designated as little d and a little d. The objective in your cow herd should be to breed away from these little d's in your matings. Developmental duplication can only be expressed phenotypically, when the mating results in two copies of the little d's being present in the calf. And this only happens when both parents are either DD carriers or DD affected. To determine the outcome of specific matings, use a Punnett square, which is a square with four quadrants inside it. Each of these quadrants represent a probability of one-fourth, or 25%. Next, place the parent's DD status on the Punnett squares. Generally, the male is on top and the female is on the left. In our first scenario, let's assume the cow is DD carrier designated with a capital D and the recessive small d. The sire, on the other hand, is DD free and is designated with a capital letter D and a capital D. Place the sire and the two capital Ds at the top of the square. Place the dam with her capital D and little d at the side of the square. In this example, there is a probability of 50% that the progeny will be DD carriers, possessing both the dominant and recessive forms of the gene and 50% would be DD-free, possessing two copies of the dominant big D. Next, let's assume we're going to mate a DD carrier sire to a DD carrier cow. Both animals are designated with a capital D and a little d. From this example, there is a 25% probability that the progeny from this mating would be DD-free. 50% of the progeny would be heterozygous, or carriers of the condition and 25% would be DD affected, which is the undesirable outcome of this mating. In the final scenario, let's assume both parents are DD free, designated with capital D and a capital D. Put the sire's DD at the top of the table and the dam's DD at the side of the table. Put the corresponding letters in each box in the columns and rows. As you can see, 100% of the progeny in this mating would be DD free and there is no risk at all in the mating, resulting in the condition. If you suspect you have DD carriers in your cow herd, simply breed them to tested DD-free cattle, and the condition will never be phenotypically expressed in your calf crop. And if your cattle are determined DD-free, then using a DDC carrier pool will also not result in a phenotypic expression of the condition. 
In either case, there's no need to cull your DD carrier cattle. Simply use the tools we've discussed in this video to make educated breeding decisions to avoid the undesirable impacts of genetic conditions.